Hi, my name is James Emerling. I'm a science education consultant at Oakland Schools and a Michigan Open Syed field test facilitator. Um, and so I wanted to make this quick video to show you how to use um, the irritable trait variations in penguins data set um, and to do it in a remote way, but also to acquaint kids with a familiar tool for organizing and analyzing data uh, in data sets, uh, which is um, spreadsheets. And so in this case here, uh, when scientists gather data in the field, sometimes they might record it in a notebook and sometimes in a computer, but when they return to the lab or the office, usually they enter it into a spreadsheet program. Uh, that helps them organize and analyze the data, right? In this case here, I've put it into a Google Sheets spreadsheet program to help us <clears throat> uh, take a look at that data so we can record it, organize it, and analyze it. And so several sheets of data are actually contained within a workbook. In this case here, there are three sheets within this workbook. Notice uh, there are these tabs at the bottom. And so this first one is just giving directions to the students to help them understand how to complete this activity to sort the data. The second one are those trait variations that uh, Dr. Sarah Bartelli uh, noted. And I wanna show you one thing about this. Notice that these are all the external trait variations. But if you click up here, notice that uh, the numbering in this column goes from three to 24. And so I've got the internal trait variations hidden, okay? And so later in lesson two, you can pull that list down and you can look at the internal trait variations. The same is also true if you're looking at the trait variations within the individual penguin types. And so when you come to this uh, third tab, the penguin traits, uh, again, students can grab these and organize them in any way that seems to make sense to them. So for instance, I might no notice that this emperor penguin has a similar pattern in its feathers that these other three do here. So I'm gonna move this emperor penguin on the other side of this e-crested penguin. To do that, I need to click on this, this letter at the top of the column one time and notice it, gives, it makes it gray and puts a hand over the top of it. If I click it and, and hold it a second time, notice it makes a fist. So I'm grabbing that, that column and I can drag it to wherever I want it to go. So now notice I've moved the emperor penguin over because it looks a lot more like those other three in front of it, to the left of it, okay? So your students can do that with all of their data to organize it. Um, then after they've done this, after they've done this organization, uh, later in the lesson again, we're gonna take a look at its internal trait variations. And so you can have your students then press on this arrow between uh, um, row three and 24, and they will have organized those same penguins already um, but now they're done for their internal trait variations also. And so then they can get a little bit more, uh, you know, into the minutia of this by taking a closer look at, well, wait a minute, these one, these two, the chin strap and Adelaide have a much closer one. So while they have many external tra traits uh, that are in common, uh, they also have some internal traits that are in common. And so I might put those two closer together, okay? Lastly, this uh, spreadsheet is great for um, lesson three. And in lesson three, we took a look at the um, trait variations, the internal trait variations of the ancient penguins. And so notice that this spreadsheet ends at column V, but again, you'll see those little arrows again. So if we click on that, now I've got access to all the data sets for all of the ancient penguins. And so I can grab them the same way by clicking on the column one time and it turns that gray. Oops, let's see, let's try that again. Click on it once and it turns it gray. Click and hold it a second time and notice it makes a little fist. So I can now drag it and I can say, oh, this Colossus looks a lot like that Southern rock hopper. I'm gonna move it over there, okay? Now, with that in mind, you need to know a couple of things before you use this program, okay? One of them being that um, for students, you need to have all of this data hidden, okay? And to do that, let me show you how. <clears throat> so to do that, you just uh, click on the columns you wanna hide, or excuse me, the rows you wanna hide. So in this case here, I wanna hide rows. Well, first off, let me get rid of the, we need to make sure that all of this is closed. So we gotta make sure that our ancient penguins are not visible and our, um, and the internal traits are not visible. 
so that we can go in the, the sequence of the lessons. So here I'm gonna click on W because I wanna get rid of Colossus all the way over to that Wipera. So I'm gonna click on Colossus and I'm gonna just drag. I'm not gonna close the fist. I'm just gonna drag it over to select all of these columns, okay? And then I'm gonna right click and notice I'm gonna go down to here where it says hide columns. So now they're all hidden. And again, if you wanna open them up, you just gotta click that arrow, right? Now that I've got the uh, ancient penguins hidden, I've got to hide these internal trait variations. And so I want to hide these rows from four. So I'm going to click on it once and drag down here. Notice I didn't close the fist by clicking on it again. So I'm going from four all the way down to 23. I want to hide all of those. So now that I've clicked on them and drug it down and they're all gray like that, I'm going to right click and hit hide column or hide rows. So now they're all hidden again. You want to make sure that you have that closed also on the trait key before you share this with students. And the reason for doing so is that all of this data would be visible to them if you shared it with them when it's like this. Okay. And so while it's hidden, when they open up theirs, theirs will also be hidden. Okay. Now to share this sheet with students, uh, I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to grab this, this, uh, this link, this uh, web address. But before I do, before I share it with students, I'm gonna click on the end of it and erase all the way up to where it says edit. And change that to the word copy. Okay. Now I can give this link in the chat to the kids or my students in my class, right? And what that'll do is it'll force them to open their own copy of it. And that's why you have to have it set up in this, you know, with the uh, columns and rows hidden before you share it with them, okay? Those columns and rows are open, then the copy that they make will also be open. Now, one last thing to remember is when students are working with us, they'll want to go back to that copy that they made so that they can work in it again. So the first time they're just looking at external heritable traits, but later in the lesson, they'll want to go back to it and look at internal heritable traits, and then a third time in lesson three. And so they want to capture this, um, this uh, uh, web address after they've made their copy. So as soon as they make their copy, let's just, uh, so as soon as they, they, they make their copy, say I've made a copy of this, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna grab this web address and I wanna paste it somewhere while I won't, where I won't lose it. So that I can go back to it whenever I need to, okay? Now, one last thing that you might find helpful, and that is uh, in the slide decks. So for instance, here's a student slide deck following their work on, um, on sorting out the strips, they can also do the same thing by um, organizing their, their penguin stickers, okay? So here are those virtual stickers. I might take them and make a group like these three here. I think that they might be similar according to the data that I just collected. Then I can take one of these squares and drag it over it. And I can send it to the back. So to do that, you just right click, order, send to back. And then I can annotate this box too. I could say that these were related because of whatever, okay? And so that's uh, one way that you could organize these uh, penguins stickers too, and keep track of the way that you saw them organized in the external heritable traits. Then later again, when you do the internal heritable traits and external together. And then finally, when you include the um, the ancient penguins. Good luck.